Well, praise the Lord. Good evening and welcome again to another Nightline program. My name is Keith Kelly and I am extremely and profoundly honored to be able to be doing Nightline tonight with our guest that I'm going to make mention to in just a few moments. And then later on in the program, you're going to have the privilege of meeting them and hearing from them. But especially tonight, I'm glad to be doing this with you and for you together to the glory of God. We have as our scripture this evening, Psalm 3, 2 through 6, where the psalmist said, Many are saying of me, God will not deliver him. But you, Lord, are a shield around me, my glory, the one who lifts my head high. I will call out to the Lord and he answers me from his holy mountain. If I lie down and sleep, I wake again because the Lord sustains me. I will not fear though 10,000s assail me on every side. If correctly read that Psalm 3, 2 through 6. Tonight, we're going to have the privilege in just a moment of uh, meeting, I think for the first time on Nightline, David Rosendahl. David is from uh, Jacksonville, Florida. He's founder of Ministry United, has written a book to the churches. And then later on, we're going to have on the program Leslie Spees. Leslie uh, has written a book as well entitled From Hot Mess to God's Best. And I dare you to say that really, really fast, four or five times. Uh, we'll just say it one time for right now, but later on we're going to talk to Leslie about that book. It's about decluttering your mess to be your best. And, uh, and I have not read the book in its entirety, but I have glanced at it, and uh, it, it is a book with tremendous depth. So we look forward to reading uh, that and talking with her as well as David. One of my favorite singers is going to be on the program tonight, uh, periodically, when we have the music portion, and that is Tim Hill, Bishop Tim Hill, from the Church of God in Cleveland, Tennessee. Uh, Tim Hill's a tremendous singer, a great preacher, and uh, a very faithful witness for the Lord Jesus Christ. So right now we're going to go to Tim Hill as he brings this camp meeting medley. I was a lone and idle, and I was a sinner too. But I heard a voice from heaven saying there's some work to do. So I took my master's hand and I joined the heavenly band. Now I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Yes, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. I promised him that I would serve him till I die. Now I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Oh, I want to see him look upon his face. There to sing forever of his saving grace. On the streets of glory, let me lift my voice. Cares all past home at last ever to rejoice. Oh, yes, I'll leave it. By and by, I'll tell him, sing love story. There, old high, and with my dear Redeemer, there no more to die. Oh, yes, I'll live in glory by and by. I'd like to stay here longer than man's allotted days and watch the fleeting changes of life's uneven ways. But if my Savior calls me, to that sweet home on high, I'll live with him forever in glory by and by. Oh, yes, I'll live in glory, glory by and by. I'll tell and sing love story, glory there on high. And with my dear Redeemer, there no more to die. Oh, yes. 
yes, I'll live in glory by and by. Some glad morning we shall see Jesus in the air. Coming after you and me, joy is ours to share. What rejoicing there will be when the saints shall rise. Headed for that jubilee yonder in the skies. Oh, what singing, oh, what shouting on that happy morning when we all shall rise. Oh, what glory, oh, hallelujah, when we meet our blessed Savior in the sky. When with all the heavenly host we began to sing, Singing in the Holy Ghost, how the heavens will ring. Millions there will join the song, with them we shall be. Praising Christ through ages long, heaven's jubilee. Oh, what singing, and oh, what shouting, on that happy morning when we all shall rise. Oh, what glory, oh, how. Blessed Savior in the skies, oh, what singing, and oh, what shouting upon that happy morning when we all shall rise, oh, what glory, oh, hallelujah, when we meet our blessed Savior in the skies, when we meet our blessed Savior in the skies. Well, praise the Lord. I'm glad that we do have hope that Christ will come again. And of course, we don't know when He's coming again, but we do know that He will return. But until He does return, we have a promise by the grace of God that He will never leave us nor forsake us. So you could very, very accurately and scripturally say that we can't lose for winning. He is with us until we are with Him. It is an honor to have on the program tonight uh, my new friend, David Rosendahl from Ministry United. How are you, my brother? Doing good. It's really good. great to be here. Thank you for having me. Well, it's an honor, great, great honor to have you. Um, we want to talk about the ministry. We want to talk about your book. But let's just start off, David, by talking about Jesus. All right. how, how did you come to know the Master? Well, I grew up knowing of the Lord, you know, if you would ask me who the Son of God was, I would, of course, say Jesus Christ, right. um, you know, but I never really was living uh, the faith or anything like that until I was uh, a young adult. I kind of had an experience, the best way I, I write about it in the book, the best way I can describe it is the Lord kind of revealed Himself to me through the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And so uh, that, uh, along with um, uh, some family members telling me things about the Lord and everything, and then of course uh, church pastor in uh, the upper room down there in uh, South Florida, where I grew up, uh, you know, getting baptized there and everything. Um, so it was around the time of uh, 19. I kind of had the experience, and my faith was was in the Lord at that point. And but I didn't really give my life over to God till when I was about 21. And I got baptized. And uh, tell me about that. Well, I was uh, going to Florida State University prior to that, and I was kind of just in the world, partying with my friends and everything. Um, I always believed there was a God, but I didn't do really anything about it, you know, kind of how a lot of people are, I, sure. I think, these days. Sure. Uh, and unfortunately, but, you know, that's how I was. I was just uh, going, doing the things that college kids were doing at Florida State University. And then that summer after, this is my third year in college, and so that summer for some reason I just had all of these kind of, best way to describe it would be supernatural experiences. Yeah. And um, I kind of had the f initial experience several years prior to that, so, but it was almost a two year time frame where there was really nothing, you know. Um, and then, so all of a sudden, in, and I write a lot about some of these in the book there, 
um, all of a sudden, it's like the Lord just started really dealing with me and wanted to get me, I guess, out of that, those circumstances in that environment. Yeah. And so I went to the church there one time. My family was wanting me to go, and I didn't really want to go to it, you know what I mean? And, uh, but I, I did have a longing for God at the same time in my heart. I was wanting to communicate with God and have some kind of relationship, but didn't really know how. Yeah. And so I go up there to the church, and I was a little bit late. Actually, I was really late to the service, and this first time that I was going there. And as I walked in, it was kind of towards the end and people were going up to the front. And I just kind of walked into the doors and just went straight up to the front, walked right up there to the altar and uh, just was put, put my hands up and everything. And the pastor had kind of put, came down and was praying for everyone. And I, I went down on the ground and I didn't know anything about any of this huh. kind of stuff, you know. This is all new to me at the time. And I went down the ground and I felt like all this stuff going out of me and leaving me and, and uh, you know, I don't know what it was, but stuff was just going away. And I felt just such a freedom afterwards. And I was just, uh, uh, you know, and then so after that, uh, I had a couple more experiences, uh, which, are, which are in more detail in the book, as I mentioned. Um, you know, but I went, uh, I went and I, I felt like kind of a, a calling. Oh, he said, he said over me another time I went there. He, the, the pastor laid his hand on me and he said, uh, Acts 10.38. Or no, this was that same time. Hmm. Acts 10.38. Hmm. Uh, he just put his hand on, on me and said that. And I had no idea what Acts 10.38 is. And so I, I didn't have a Bible. I went out there to the bookstore afterwards and I, I got a New King James Version Bible. And I opened it up to read what Acts 10.38 said, and it said, God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit, and he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Wow. So, wow. Um, and then there was a little commentary to that. It said, since Christians are also filled with the Holy Spirit and power, they should go about doing good and minister as Jesus did. And so I kind of felt kind of a prophetic calling at that point, you know, uh, to maybe do something in the ministry. I told my, my stepfather about it and everything, and and he said, well, it sounds like, you know, God's dealing with you and you should do something about it. Hmm. And, you know, so uh, I went there, I got baptized and I s started talking to the pastor and I enrolled in Central Bible College up in Springfield, Missouri. And within this short period of time, I had transferred up there in that summer. And the next semester, I'm starting Central Bible College from Florida State University up in Springfield, Missouri. So it took you a while to get there. It, it, it took me about but, two but years. Once yeah. you got there, it... it you were, as they say, you were all in. Right. right. You were all in. Right. How about those those friends uh, with whom you had you had uh, hung out and and lived in the world with? Mm -hmm. Was it a struggle letting them go, or did they let you go, or or did God just kind of take care of that? I think I think God really did a lot of that because I just kind of got up and, and got out of it and got away from all that, the negative influences and everything. Now, I still cared about them, and I still to this day do. Sure. And, and in fact, that's how a lot of my writing began, because I actually would write a letter to some of my friends um, and trying to tell them about the Lord. And I would say, uh, you know, certain things and quote scriptures, uh, several of them, and uh, tell them about the Lord Jesus Christ in those letters. And that's kind of when I actually first realized that I had somewhat of a gift in, in perhaps writing some things. So. Um, you know, I think the Lord kind of took care of that, though, because I was, I was just, uh, I went up there, I was filled with the Spirit of God in the hotel room before I started Central Bible College up there. Hmm. So it was just all, and I didn't even know what it was either at the time. And that's a whole other story in itself. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, I think God did a lot of that for me. Well, it sure does sound like that uh, He gave you a, a tremendous foundation. When did you, when did you begin to realize David, uh, that that prophecy, that that word of, of of prophecy, that word of knowledge that the pastor spoke over your life, uh, was more than just him saying something, but it was really from the Lord. I think that I I realized that when I started getting into the scriptures a little bit, because I, at that point I hadn't really read the Bible much at all. Like I said, that was the first Bible that I had purchased before I started Central Bible College. This is all about 20 years ago too, so this is quite a long time ago that all this happened. And um, I, I started reading in the scriptures too, and I guess with maybe being filled with the Spirit and everything, I started, you know, kind of uh, seeing some things in there that, like I saw this church in there that was without spot, without blemish, or any such thing. And it was just, I think, 
I, I realized that I could just understand the scriptures somehow, mm -hmm. you know, and other people would read it and they would say, oh, I can't, but I just, I feel like I had this gift to be able to understand them as I was reading them. And so yeah. maybe that's when it started kind of connecting that, okay, maybe this was a little bit more because now I've got some, some evidence, so to speak, uh, of, a, of perhaps some type of a spiritual gift in place, you know, not to boast or anything, but to speak the truth of my testimony. Yeah, yeah. So, Are you married? I am, yes. Tell me, children? Uh, yes, I am. I am married. Um, and uh, two children. Uh, my that situation is a little bit. Uh, it's a long story. The whole situation from the beginning, because there was, and one of the reasons I wrote this book was because um, I had an experience with a group when I was younger, and it's a very long story actually, and I touched on it a little bit in the book. But they were very controlling, and it made me realize that there's some of the falsehood out there, and I could go into detail with mm. that a, a bit more, but I don't. I think it'd be really necessary right now, but um, I am married and my wife is from Costa Rica and uh, we have two children, um, but uh, you know, um, it's, it's, a, it's a kind of a long story what happened prior to that. It's, it's sure. a little bit of a trial tribulation type of situation. Sure, thing, sure. So. Well, obviously, whatever the trial was, mm -hmm. whatever the tribulation was, uh, God's grace lets you come, come through it mm -hmm. and you're better for it. Yes, yes. Amen, amen. Yes. I've I've got to I've got to ask you this as far as as the the landscape the layout of the American church today if you had to describe where we're at would would you say that uh, we're healthy and thriving all the way across the board or that we're in the hospital we're in serious condition or we're in ICU. Mm -hmm. Well, that that's that's somewhat of a, of a challenging uh, question because I think that there's so much landscape there to cover. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. I'm I'm just uh, I, as an individual, it's hard to kind of really uh, grasp that 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 big area and, and that many people. You know, there's so yeah. many things going on out there that we don't really know what they're saying, what they're preaching. Yeah. I would say from a general observation and standpoint, though, that it does seem like, uh, well, just from a statistical standpoint, mm -hmm. you know, the, the amount of different denominations and divisions are out there uh, kind of indicate that there's, there's something happening, whether it's doctrines or, of men or false teachers or whatever that have kind of infiltrated the ranks, uh, so to speak. Yeah. over the years that have kind of put us in a position now and in this day and a lot of this isn't any of our doing it's kind of from the generations past so we find ourselves now with a very divided church doctrinally and in a situation that i think we need to do something about rather hmm. than just continue the way things are wow when when you talk about um the the, the church and you talk about doctrine and you you talk about unity uh, where in the mix of all of that have the doctrines of men gained so much prominence and some folks who are watching tonight may not even have a clue what you're talking about when you talk about the doctrines of men what is that and and how, how are those doctrines of men affecting us today? Well, I, I think it's pretty evident that doctrines of man that basically just come from man's understanding and not from the Spirit of God and, and uh, do and have caused many divisions. You know, I think it's the doctrines of the Spirit, the doctrines of the, of the truth that will bring about the oneness in Christ that we all read about in the Scriptures. Um, and so, I think that when when we get these doctrines kind of coming in that are causing kind of envy and condemnation and even a hatred between one another sometimes, mm -hmm. I think that we need to kind of look at them and uh, maybe maybe understand that they that they're a little more dangerous even than they might seem because mm -hmm. if anything any doctrine that isn't producing the fruits of the spirit in our lives over time can cause us to be in a situation where we need to, we're not developing the proper love in our hearts towards one another. And that's one of the things that the doctrine of men will do is it does not produce the fruits of the Spirit. And so I've seen many situations, unfortunately more than I would like to say or, or, or admit, out there where 
these types of things and situations are happening and taking place where uh, over time the people that are involved in these certain situations are actually condemning and hating other believers over time mm -hmm. rather than loving them as we should and first and uh, first John was very clear that uh, if anyone hates a brother or sister he's uh, walking in darkness and doesn't know where he's going because the darkness has blinded him so I know that we all talk about the love for each other and that we should have but I don't think we may realize just how dangerous it is if we don't have that love towards one another Wow that's a that's a very very strong word I, I want us to go to a song in just a minute, but when we come back, I, I want to talk about uh, how can we better walk in the light mm -hmm. and uh, not only illuminate that light within, but also communicate mm -hmm. that message without. We're going to go back to Tim Hill. And he's going to sing a song now entitled, When Life is at Its Worst. It's never been this bad, my friend Though you've always found a way You've searched your mind And still can't find one thing that helps today You've looked around But haven't found The friends you thought were true But don't give in I have a friend Who knows just what to do He's the best I know at caring, drying tears and burden bearing. When others try and fail, he stands the test. And if pain your heart's revealing, He's the best I know at healing. So when life is at its worst, God's at his best. Oh, I believe that. I really do. He's at his best when all the rest have left you all alone why he'll dry your tears he'll calm your fears like none you've ever known why he holds today then he'll make a way just trust and let him lead and when you find he's all you have, you'll know he's all you need. He's the best I know at caring, drying tears and burden bearing. When others try and fail, he stands the test And if pain your heart's revealing He's the best I know and healing So when life is at its worst Bring him all your pain and your hurt Cause when life is at its worst, God's at his best. Oh, I believe that. There's no mountain too high, no valley too low. 
because when life's at its worst, Jesus said, I'll never leave you or forsake you, but I'll be with you always, even till the end of the world. When life's at its worst, God is at his best. And what an encouraging message that is. When life is at its worst, you'll never find God anything less than at His very best. And I praise Him for that. I thank Him for that. I give Him glory for that. There's so many resources available, not uh, to replace the Bible, not even in addition to the Bible, but because of the Bible and because of the Word of God that has throughout the ages touched and transformed men's lives we are very very thankful tonight to be able to tell you about this book from David Rosendahl uh, to the churches to the churches David uh, when was this book born in your heart and spirit and uh, how did it come into being and and even more so how does it relate to what we were talking about earlier well, uh, initially, as I had mentioned earlier, uh, I was writing some letters to friends and stuff and kind of realized when I was writing that that I, uh, I enjoyed doing it and I could get the message across pretty clearly. Um, and so that, that book there really uh, started, I guess, about four years ago. I kind of wrote the first three chapters of it and then I just had it on my computer and I didn't do much with it for a while, uh, probably about three years. Hmm. You know, and then I kind of things uh, fell into place and some doors were opened and um, it, it seemed to come back to the forefront there. And so I kind of pulled up the file and I read it and I ended up uh, writing the rest of it um, about a year, year and a half ago. And when I picked up in chapter four, I was really astonished at that time because at that point uh, I had grown in the Lord quite a bit mm -hmm. from the time prior to that, even the three year period before. And so... When I picked up at chapter four, I was astonished at how many scriptures were coming to my mind as I was writing it and the way that it was flowing. Hmm. It was just kind of this, this thing that where there's over 700 supporting Bible verses in the book. Um, yeah. So many to where I had to obtain written permission from Thomas Nelson with the New King James Bible in hmm. order to utilize that many. And so, but that's kind of what was happening with the book. I mean, verses that of course I had read because I read the New Testament hundreds of times and uh, I had had them in my mind from study and stuff, but some of these verses were coming to my mind just kind of under the anointing of the Spirit, I guess, just and, and just establishing the, the the message that I was trying to relate to, to us, which is that we are all one in Christ and that we should uh, have the love of Christ in us. In fact, that was basically the new commandment that He gave us, which I have yeah. at the very before chapter one. This is my commandment that you love one another. And I'm persuaded there's a reason that he said that, not just because it sounds good. I mean, it was a commandment, but I think he realizes what happens if we don't mm. love one another. Mm. I know he realizes it. So, you know, that's, uh, that's kind of the, the background of the book and, and how it was written. What, David, what does, does loving, loving one another look like in, in this world today? Well, I think uh, the best way we can describe it uh, would be uh, I think there's kind of maybe two different types of love. There's kind of the brotherly love, but then there's also the, the love of God, mm -hmm. you know, and I think we have to kind of start at the brotherly love or the love for the brethren, the love for, the, for one another um, before we can really uh, have the agape love abide in us or the love of God abide in us because yeah. the love of God is a very serious, uh, unending type of eternal love, I, I'm, I'm persuaded, that, you know, has to do with, things like laying down our lives for one another, mm. you know, and, and such like that, which are, you know, really uh, forms, which are things you can't really act out. You actually have to have the love of God in you in order to do them. Um, you know, so I think love towards one another kind of just starts with uh, showing the fruit to the Spirit to one another also. So I'm not sure. I, I think that once we start developing the fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, uh, gentleness, kindness, patience, uh, faith, self-control, and mm. these different things, then we can show those to one another. And when we're showing the fruits of the Spirit to each other, kindness uh, and, and these different things, um, then we're showing 
the love for one another. And I'm sure other ways as well, but that would probably be one of the Agree. easiest ways to, Agree. to recognize it. When we talk about unity, and, and you do an amazing job with, with your book along those lines, how important is the Trinity when it comes to the unity of the church? Well, I talk about that in, uh, in chapter one a little bit because the, the, the verse there in chapter one says there's one God and Father of all who is above all, through you all, and in you all. And I, I, I make a kind of a note there to the side that we understand that God expresses himself, reveals himself through the, the persons of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Right. And in order to have the, the unity that we must have, it has to be God that is doing it. It has to be the Father, the Son, mm. and the Holy Spirit. Because mm. even Jesus prayed to the Father to make them one. In John chapter, I believe it was 17, maybe 18. Correct. Chapter 17, to Correct. make them one. And there was another reason for that too, is so that the world may believe that he had sent him. And he said that twice actually. He said uh, he was praying to the Father to make us one, that the world may believe. So there's no way, there's no man or group of men or, or, or ministry for that matter that can right. really accomplish anything like this. It's the Father. Uh, through Christ and through the Holy Spirit that make us one with each other and we can just maybe be uh, servants of that or vessels you know to re relay the message so to speak of it but it's really got to be God working in us and the truth of the Word of God working in us in order to really accomplish it in its fullness. What areas of let's say your life or ministry would you be able to uh, just share very freely with our viewing audience this, this might include uh, some of the changes Christ has made in, in your life, your family, your work, relationships, habits, along those lines. Well, I, I think that, uh, you know, walking in the Spirit and walking in the light as He is in the light, you know, we have uh, fellowship one with another. If we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ, the blood of His Son, Jesus Christ, cleanses us from all sin. Mm -hmm. So I think that I, when, when putting off the old man and putting on the new, you know, sort of thing, yeah. if, if it so be that you have heard of uh, Jesus and have been taught by Him as the truth is in Christ, that we put off the old man and put on the new man. Mm. You know, so these, these types of things were done through faith and the grace of God, of course. Um, you know, can allow, ha have produced a change in my life, um, you know, that have bring forth uh, hopefully fruits of the Spirit, yeah. you know, because when I was younger, I, I didn't really uh, have some of that as much as I had hoped, you know, and so hopefully I've grown in the knowledge of God and, and in the Spirit, and so now I can, through abiding in Him and abiding in the Word of God and fellowship one with another, um, I, I think that uh, there have been ways of lifestyle and different changes that have taken place where I, uh, I, I don't really, I'm careful, you have to be somewhat careful, you know, who we are around and associate with because they're going to influence us. So what fellowship does light have with darkness? You know, wow. so I've, I've had to kind of, uh, as much as that even isn't easy sometimes, you know, you have to at some times make sure that we are walking in the truth, you know, and, hmm. uh, and abiding in, in the faith, you know, as, as the scriptures are pretty clear on in so many areas. So, Talk to me for just a moment about authority without control. I think that that's a very important, that there's a chapter in the book on that I think you're referencing, and, mm -hmm. and that, is, uh, that is very important because I think that kind of differentiates to a degree uh, a false teacher, a false prophet from a real one, so to speak, hmm. in, in a way. It's one, of the, it's one of the ways to differentiate because if you've got a situation where you have somebody that has authority but they're also very controlling, Mm -hmm. then you're looking at a situation that is not so much, in my opinion, uh, led of the Holy Spirit. It's more mm -hmm. led, of, led of men, the pride of man, and, and, and such, uh, those types of things, and the, uh, more of a fleshly operation yeah. even. Yeah. You know, so I, th I'm, I know that um, in order to uh, walk, in order to uh, have the fullness of the Spirit in our life, we need to really uh, just make sure that we don't become too controlling anything. Like for instance, with me, with this a book, I've written it to the churches, you know, okay, yeah, that's, that's, that, that can be kind of, it can be taken the wrong way if I'm trying to be very controlling and control everyone, you know, but I have really no desire to do that whatsoever. In fact, mm -hmm. if you want to listen to what I have to say, 
okay if you don't that's fine if you don't believe what i have to say you know that's fine too i i'm 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 open to people reading the book and pointing out to me what they might not agree with or whatever you know because yeah. i'm willing to learn too you know so i think that there's a lot of groups though, unfortunately that i've experienced that are overly controlling and christ was not that way christ was not controlling with his disciples in fact when he was with them he had asked them after many disciples had left and stopped following them he turned to the 12 and he said would you leave also I mean, he was, he, was, he was so open about that and had such a freedom for his followers and disciples that he even asked him if they wanted to leave. And I think it was Peter that turned to him and said, well, where shall we go? You wow. have the words of eternal life. Wow. You know, so I don't think that a, a, uh, a pastor or, or anybody that's claiming the, the name of Christ and teaching things out of the scriptures and such need to be controlling because if you have the truth, it's the truth that people will want to continue in. You know, so you don't have to control people with fear. You don't have to control people with all these different aspects of, of, of the world, so to speak, and, and not of Christ, you know. So I think that that's what the authority without control is a very important aspect of ministry and of following Christ uh, in the way that we should. Hmm. Do you find very often that control and, uh, and confrontation can 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 actually uh, be over overwhelming in a in a person's life. How do you how do you love somebody enough that you speak the truth to them in love to maintain the cause of unity, even if it might divide you for for a period of time? Well, I think speaking the truth in love is is necessary and sometimes the truth can be a little bit offensive so to speak i mean there were people that that heard christ who spoke told the totality of truth you know yeah. from the father to everyone and some of the times when he said some things they they offended people yeah um you know not all the time of course because they were astonished at his doctrine and the way that he would yeah. you know say things but sometimes we do have to bring forth the word of truth maybe even if it uh if it might hurt somebody's feelings or something you know i don't think that we should ever be ashamed of what is true and right mm. you know and i think that we should be bold in the lord to proclaim you know uh, certain things and point out maybe certain things to people because we would love them you know if, if we really if, love if we them. really do you know you will say you know um you know you might say this or that or you know maybe you're if you think someone's in a situation where they might should not be or in in a, in a place where they shouldn't be you should we should through love i think it would actually be love to point it out and it would maybe not be not to i i, t I totally 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 agree this book to the churches is, is there application here for uh, old established churches, young churches, contemporary churches, traditional churches? I want you to answer that uh, as we wrap up in just a moment. But right now, we're going to go back to Tim Hill. He's going to sing a song entitled, The Best Hallelujah in the House. Don't bless my soul to know how fast your airplane flies. When I gather with the saints, I need to hear the sound of someone who testified. They were lost and almost died until the Lord came in and delivered them from sin. Who's got the best hallelujah in the house? Who can raise a hand of praise and give a victory shout? If God's been good to you, and I'd like to hear it now. Who's got the best hallelujah in the house? Are you the one whose life was running bad? Or maybe you're the one you were always feeling sad. Well, I need to hear it told from someone who really knows you were in my 
fiery clay. Now you're on the rock to stay. You're the one this song's about. Let's hear a victory shout. Who's got the best hallelujah in the house? Who can raise a hand of praise and give a victory shout? If God's been good to you, then I'd like to hear it now. Who's got the best hallelujah in the house? Who's got the best hallelujah in the house? in the house. Oh, if God's been good to you, I'd like to hear it now. Who's got the best hallelujah in the house? Who's got the best hallelujah in the house? We've been talking this evening with David Rosendahl about his book, To the Churches. David, I'd ask you, uh, before we went to that song with uh, Bishop Hill, about uh, what kind of church is this book applicable for? Well, in the introduction, I actually mentioned in there that it's uh, written, so to speak, or, or directed to um, all churches. I mean, even including the Catholic Church. It's one of the very few books that I know of that actually also tries to address them as well. Mm -hmm. uh, Protestant, Orthodox, uh, uh, Pentecostal, Baptist, I mean really truly everyone um, because uh, that's, uh, who I'm that's who I'm trying to reach is everyone. I'm not trying to disclude anyone in, in that matter. And uh, as far as it being applicable and how it can be applicable to them, mm -hmm. um, even some of the, the the older, more established ones, uh, you know, from thousands of years ago, hundreds of years ago, um, I'm persuaded that there's what's called in the scriptures the doctrine of the unity of the spirit. Mm -hmm. And I don't know that there's anyone out there that really terms it as such or uses it as such. I'm sure there might be. But I do think that the churches in general are kind of missing. And I, I don't think this would be a doctrine of man um, because of the fruits that it would produce. Uh, uh, but I think that we're kind of missing what would be called the doctrine of the unity of the spirit. Hmm. And that's a lot of what the book is about. It kind of introduces that. Uh, not so much directly calling it that, but uh, that's what kind of those 700 supporting verses are, are doing, are supporting that teaching that there is. And if we incorporated the doctrine of the unity of the spirit into uh, our lives, whether uh, officially or non-officially or whatever, it would really generate the oneness that Christ prayed for in it would start to at least help to generate mm. the oneness that Christ prayed for to the Father that we would be. Amen. So. Amen. Define in in layman's terms unity of the Spirit. I think the unity of the Spirit has to do with us being one in Christ as it said there. I mean the, the, the subtitle of the book there is for we are all one in Christ and I think that applies to all true believers. All true mm -hmm. believers are one in Christ. There is one body, one faith, one hope, one spirit, one Lord, one God, a Father who is above all, through all, and in us all. And so for us to be in unity and have the unity of the Spirit would include us understanding that we are one in Christ through the Spirit of God and through calling upon the name of the Lord. I mean, right. that all, that all there's, there, the scriptures talk about a baptism being baptized into Christ. We were all baptized into Christ. We weren't baptized into different Christs. We were baptized into the same one same Jesus Christ. Jesus, yeah. And he is above all the churches. And so I'm persuaded that the true faith abides in Christ. And uh, we can access Christ, of course, through the different churches and denominations and everything. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, the one true faith that exists uh, is, is with Christ and with God the Father and with the Holy Spirit. And mm. as I just mentioned, He is over all the churches. So, yeah. you know, uh, 
we access that faith kind of through some of those, but we can't really say that any of those are that because that would almost be blasphemy, so to speak, you know, because yeah. the true faith is in Christ and not in a, in a particular organization or anything. Mm. You know, so I'm all for the way that things are because Christ is the head of the church, so if they are this way, it's obviously the way he wants it to be because I think it would kind of be dangerous if there's just one big church and you get the wrong people in power over something like that and you'd have a kind of a situation that might not be the best. So I think it does need to be the way that it is now. And it obviously does because that's how it is. And Christ is the head of it and he knows what he's doing. So this mm. is how things are. Nevertheless, we still need to realize that we should abide in the unity of the spirit. And that just includes us being able to kind of have fellowship with each other and not condemn one another as much, not be so judgmental towards each other and mm. have love towards one another as we really should. You know, to me, I think that there's been so many problems and so many divisions that have taken place because unfortunately over the years, some people have perhaps tried to understand the scriptures while still having hatred in their heart for a brother and sister. Yeah. And we can't, God's, I don't think, going to reveal the mysteries of the Bible and the scriptures to someone that doesn't have the love of Christ in their heart towards their own brothers as we should. So I think first we need to get uh, the love of God in our heart as we should first. And then we can open up the scriptures and we can, God can start to reveal, and I'm talking to ministers sure, or, or pastors sure, and stuff. Sure. Then we can start to have God reveal to us what the truth of, is in there, you know. But if we, if we start to do it before we have that, I think we're going to find ourselves in situations that uh, would not be according to the will of God. How, how can, can damage be repaired where, where there has been disunity? And, and we're not talking about even over doctrine, but as you said earlier, the doctrines of man. Mm -hmm. um, I think, you know, writing the book, I think the book kind of uh, helps actually accomplish things, like reading it, for instance. Like, there's some members of my family, some are, are uh, this denomination, I won't mention specific ones, but you know, some are go to church in this denomination, and then another family member goes to this denomination, this and that, and so it gets a little even weird sometimes, you know, when you come together and you try to have fellowship in the spirit because you've got some of those, those, those separations between us, you know what I mean? That's just family, There's not to mention friends and, and oh, beyond goodness, that, yeah. you know, everything. Goodness, so yeah. I, I, this book here, I think when people read the book and you read the book, it helps kind of take down some of those separations between us and opens up the, uh, the comfort and the love that we can have towards one another better and allows us to walk in the unity of the spirit more. Um, because we, now we understand, okay, yeah, we are one in Christ. Yes, we have these different things, but we are all uh, under Christ um, as we should be. Amen. Amen. Would you just lead us in prayer right now, even, even for, for churches and ministers and ministries, uh, that we could discover that uh, unity of the Spirit and that we would demonstrate it more and more. Would you do that? Yeah. And while David is praying, I want to encourage you to call that number on the screen. Maybe there is a situation where you would like for us to pray uh, more specifically for you in regards to the unity of the Spirit. Would you pray? Right. Heavenly Father, we come to you and we ask humbly in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, that you be with us, that you lead us with your spirit, that it be the Holy Spirit that leads us and works in us, and that we might develop the love towards one another as we should have. We ask that you help us to understand the unity of the spirit and the love towards one another that your son Jesus Christ commanded us to have. We understand the importance of it, and we want to abide in that love even though sometimes we might not know how and it might not be the easiest thing for us to do. We ask you, God, to help us to abide in that love towards one another and that we might have the understanding that comes only from you and your son, Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, David. For anyone interested in getting more information on this book, what do they need to do? Well, uh, they could go to the website, uh, ministryunited.global. And also it's available on Amazon and pretty much all uh, other major bookstores uh, worldwide online. And um, those are kind of the, or you can also go to uh, Ministry Unite on Facebook. Uh, we've got just over 100,000 followers on there, which has been a really nice way to be able to uh, get the word out about it and everything. So kind of those ways, the website, uh, Facebook, Ministry United. And uh, even on Amazon, if you'd like to search to the churches, it'll pull up and there's some more information about it there. 
and if you're not familiar with how to navigate um, across the internet and find Amazon, uh, just come by my house one day, okay? Because there's an Amazon truck coming by <laughs> on a consistent basis. Kind of kidding, not really. But uh, we see those trucks all the time. Right. And, uh, and just all in all, depending, you can, you can order um, a book or whatever. And sometimes it gets there very, very quickly. That's right. Very quickly. So uh, I commend you for the work you've done. Do you have anything else that you're working on right now as far as a book? Uh, I do have another book in mind, but uh, the, the next kind of major thing that's, that's in the works is actually a meeting in Costa Rica because the book's kind of an extension of my ministry, which is Ministry United. Mm -hmm. And so we've got an event coming up in Costa Rica on November 23rd of, uh, or November 11th, 2023 of this year. And uh, it's going to be kind of an all churches community event over there in Nicoya, Costa Rica. And so we're going to try to get uh, as many of the local churches and ministries together that are willing to work with us and want to work with us to kind of try to reach out to the community and show them the love of God and kind of uh, an evangelistic type of uh, event yeah. as well. You know, try to invite people so that they can invite family members or friends, you know, to the event and uh, preach the gospel, basically. You know, Amen. so kind of all it's got a twofold uh, goal to it, you know, kind of get us to work together as the body of Christ and also to evangelize and, and spread the gospel. So that's coming up November 11th of, of this year in Nicoya, Costa Rica. So we're excited. So, about that. so is, is Costa Rica strong evangelically? Uh, I, I, I think so. Uh, there's, there's uh, a lot of churches there, you know, uh, throughout the country that are in place, you know, um, it's where my wife is from and, and this particular spot in Nicoya is uh, very close to where her family is from and um, so it's kind of a dear, it's kind of, it's dear to our hearts, you know, this mm. particular area here. Um, but yeah, I mean, there is, there's a lot of churches in place over there, you know, and, uh, but I think that there's also that element that needs to be reached still. You Amen. Know, so. I've known of a lot of folks who've gone over there for, for missions, uh, language school mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. At, at certain times. So we, uh, we praise the Lord for that, praise the Lord for you. We praise the Lord for you as well, who've taken time to watch this program tonight and be a part of this. Uh, we want to just bid Godspeed to David Rosendahl as he just continues on doing what he's doing. And I pray just a hedge of protection around you and your, your family and the ministry God has called you to. In just a moment, we'll be taking a short break and then we'll come back and we'll talk to Leslie Spees about her book, From Hot Mess to God's Best. Remember the scripture this evening that we began with where the psalmist prayed in Psalm 3, 2 through 6. Many are saying of me, God will not deliver him. But you, Lord, are a shield around me, my glory, the one who lifts my head high. I call out to the Lord, and he answers me from his holy mountain. I lie down and sleep. I wake again because the Lord sustains me. I will not fear, though tens of thousands assail me on every side. Be encouraged, my precious, precious friend, that God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. It just could be that you have sat here tonight and you have listened to us talk to this extremely interesting man of God and we've talked about the church, David. Mm -hmm. We've talked about the church. But uh, the, the mission of the church is to promote the gospel. And that's yes, what you're absolutely. talking about doing in Costa Rica. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, we need to be able to reach everyone. And that's, you know, we, we, we don't want to, we want to, Christ said, go into all the world and preach the gospel, the yeah. Great Commission. So yeah. that's what we are to do. Um, all of us, anybody can do that. We can all, everyone can talk about the Lord and, proclaim how he's the son of God. I mean, that was the main faith then, back then that they were trying to tell everyone is that Jesus was the son of God. And then believing that you have eternal life, Yeah, you know? So yeah. we definitely should all be willing to do that and, and 
longing to do that even. You know, there should be a desire in us to do that. And I think that there certainly is in all believers, you know, to be able to uh, tell others about the Lord Jesus Christ and what He's done for them and what He can do for those, for all of us. Mm. You know, thank God for sending His Son. Amen. You know, thank God that He Amen. loved us enough to send His Son to come down here and deliver us from, I mean, what a mess we'd be in if He didn't do such a thing, you know. So thank God for, for doing what He did for us, for loving us enough, though we were sinners, he still loved us enough to send His Son to die for That's us and it deliver says. us. And to, and to give us eternal life. You know, we don't deserve it. Mm -hmm. uh, we could never do anything to deserve it. But He no. gives us eternal life, you know, through, through faith that He came and, and uh, he, he took on the sins of the world and died for us so that we could be forgiven. What a, what a great God we serve. Amen. Amen. And to know that this great God has good plans for our lives in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. We've got just a minute or so left. Uh, when the Spirit of God brings David Rosendahl to our hearts and minds, what are two or three ways very quickly that we could pray for you? I, please pray that, that I be led of the Holy Spirit. That's really one of my main prayers on, on almost a daily basis is, Lord, would just lead me with your Spirit. Those who are led by the Spirit of God, they are the children of God. That's what it says. You know, and so I really just want to truly be led of the Spirit. You know, mm. that's one of the, if, and, and that uh, I just uh, can understand the Scriptures as, as should, mm. as I should, and, you know, and that we can just kind of all, all be one in Christ. You know, I just, uh, just pr pray for me that, that the Lord will, uh, just uh, keep me in His truth. You know, we can be, uh, we can be sidelined sometimes, and uh, that the right people be around me. You know, you got to be careful with that. Like, I'm so thankful to be here with you and people like-minded. You know, but we've got to be careful because uh, we need to make sure we surround ourselves with those who have a good influence on us and everything. So that Ditto. I would be, that I would Ditto. Be, right, yes. right back at you, brother. I yes. would appreciate your prayers, one in the same. And thank you, for being a part of this night line. We will be back, unless Jesus comes, in just a moment after a very short break with more of Nightline. God bless you and thanks.